WFYI podcasts are brought to you by Visit Bloomington. Bloomington, Indiana is home to a wide range of live music events and venues. More info on upcoming performances at musicbloomington.com. This is WFYI News Now. It's November 21st, and I'm Darian Benson. Coming up, the Tippecanoe County Board of Commissioners voted to advance an ordinance that creates a nine-month moratorium on large water withdrawals from the county. Many residents spoke in favor of the measure. It's no today, tomorrow, next month, next year, forever. We don't want it. But first, these headlines. Rural communities in Indiana can receive more than $1.4 million in energy efficiency and conservation grants. The state rolled out a new two-year grant program last week. Rebecca Thiel reports the program passes along money given to the state to communities that weren't eligible for a federal grant. The Federal Energy Efficiency and Conservation Block Grant Program made funding available to states and larger communities. 37 of them in Indiana are eligible for those dollars, as well as the Pokagon Band of the Potawatomi. Ryan Hadley directs the Indiana Office of Energy Development. He says the state will pass along its portion to smaller communities that weren't eligible for the original grants. Being able to help counties and and local units of government achieve energy savings reduces costs on them and thereby reduces the impact to Hoosier taxpayers. Local governments can use the money for things like creating energy efficiency plans and audits, replacing streetlights, purchasing electric vehicles and charging infrastructure, and training workers in clean energy jobs. The deadline to apply is February 2nd. For Indiana Public Broadcasting, I'm Rebecca Thiel. The state and groups like the Indiana Resilience Funding Hub are available to help communities with the application. A district court heard a case last week alleging the state is prioritizing certain groups when providing government-issued licenses. The law, which went into effect in July, made Ukrainians on humanitarian parole eligible for Indiana driver's licenses and identification cards. Nicolis Esperito is the deputy legal director at the National Immigration Law Center, one of the civil rights groups that filed the lawsuit. He says this law is discriminatory toward other groups on humanitarian parole. This is a matter where Ukrainian individuals can get driver's licenses, but individuals from Haiti, from Venezuela, from Cuba, from Nicaragua, cannot, despite having the same immigration status. Jefferson St. Hilar is a Haitian immigrant living in Indiana. He says he believes those on humanitarian parole from all groups should be eligible to receive a driver's license as it's necessary for daily life. It's been very frustrating because imagine that you have to go to work each day, and you have to rely on a ride with poor workers, with families, and people, they have their own schedule, and no one likes to wait for someone. You want to be independent, to be able to move around by yourself. The defendants argued the law was not intended to discriminate against other groups, and that the state simply took a federal statute and placed it into state law. There is not a clear timeline on when the judge will make a decision. The Federal and Social Services Administration has added another round of its employer-sponsored child care grants. Violet Comberweiland reports these grants are aimed at helping Indiana businesses expand access to child care options for their employees. James Vaughn is the Deputy Communications Director for Child Care at the FSSA. He says the grants are designed to allow for the creation or expansion of child care services for working Hoosiers. Vaughn says the next round of grants was added on to give employers more time to invest in these options. A lot of businesses and organizations are still trying to figure out what they want this to look like, what exactly they want to apply for, what exactly they want partnerships to look like, and so we wanted to give them some additional time. He says 25% of the funding for these employer-sponsored child care grants will be reserved for applicants in the second round. The deadline for the first round of these applications is Wednesday. For Indiana Public Broadcasting, I'm Violet cumber And finally, the Tippecanoe County Board of Commissioners voted Monday to advance an ordinance that creates a nine-month moratorium on large water withdrawals from the county. Ben Thorpe reports the move comes as the state is studying the feasibility of a pipeline that would move water from Tippecanoe County to an industrial district in Lebanon. For over an hour, Tippecanoe County residents spoke in favor of the measure. Many said they were afraid that they would run out of water if the withdrawals were ultimately approved. 
Cheryl Kirkpatrick is a West Lafayette resident. She said slowing the project down wasn't enough. It's no today, tomorrow, next month, next year, forever. We don't want it. Commissioner Tom Murtaugh said the move was intended to give the legislature time to put state water protections in place. If in those nine months, you know, we're not happy with what comes out of the state house, then we can extend that moratorium. In a statement, the Indiana Economic Development Corporation called the county's decision moot, saying there were no plans to withdraw water in the next nine months. The ordinance is expected to receive a final reading in December. I'm Ben Thorpe. That's all for today's episode of WFYI News Now. Our podcast is produced by the following people who live in your community. Arbriana Heron, Kendall Antron, who composed the music for this podcast, and me, Darian Benson. Our news director is Sarah Neil Estes. If you liked today's episode, remember to subscribe and share. And find us wherever you get your podcasts to hear more stories about your community. We'll be back tomorrow with more local news. WFYI podcasts are brought to you by Visit Bloomington. Bloomington, Indiana is home to a wide range of live music events and venues. More info on upcoming performances at musicbloomington.com.